the first criteria you're looking at is what's the speed of the corner that you're trying to solve the problem in. If it's a low speed corner, it's likely a mechanical problem. So a first or second gear corner, like on a street course at Long Beach. If it's a mid-speed problem, uh, you know, third or fourth gear, then it could be a combination of mechanical and aero. And if it's a high-speed problem, say turn one at Sebring, then it's going to be an aerodynamic problem. So if you have a mechanical balance issue, you're going to go after springs and bars and alignment, you know, the mechanical parts of the car. If it was understeering, you're doing too much work on the front axle, so we've got to move some of that work from the front axle to the rear axle. So typically we're doing that by moving the mechanical balance rearward, which really means we're going to add rear bar, soften the front bar. We're going to add rear spring, soften the front spring. Whatever we're doing, we're trying to move that mechanical balance rearward compared to the front axle so that the rear tires have to do more work and the fronts have to do a little less work. Yeah, dealing with mechanical oversteer is just the opposite. We're going to move the mechanical balance forward in the car uh, by adding front bar, adding front spring, maybe taking away some rear spring, maybe taking away some rear bar, moving the mechanical balance forward to solve low speed oversteer. Usually the quickest way to solve these problems mechanically is to adjust the anti-roll bars. That's your, that's your fastest way to solving it. You know, changing a spring is a little more involved because it takes more time. But in IndyCar, they have adjustable anti-roll bars in the cockpit. As the rear tires degrade and the fuel burns off, the car might start to get oversteer into it and get loose. Then the driver can put some front bar into it. He can reduce the rear bar. And he can make those changes from the cockpit. If you've got high-speed understeer, now, as opposed to mechanical, we wanted to move the mechanical balance rearward to fix understeer. Now for aerodynamics, we want to move the aerodynamic center pressure forward. That means we're going to have more downforce in the front axle and maybe a little bit less downforce in the rear axle, and that's going to add grip to the front, which is going to reduce high-speed understeer. And then high-speed oversteer, we're going to move the center pressure rearward. So we're going to add rear wing, take away front wing. Specific to alignment, the way I think about it is the rear wheels are behind the center of gravity, so they can really create a lot of stability problems. For example, if you have toe out on the rear axle, because it's behind the center of gravity, it's going to take away a lot of stability from the car. So if you want stability, you need toe in on the rear axle. There's just no way around it. On the front axle, you can be more generous in your settings. You could be toe out or toe in, and you're not really going to be changing the stability as much as the steering feel perception from the driver. All the changes in the front axle are a little bit more subtle, whereas the changes in the rear axle, because it's behind the ever-important center of gravity, are critical to the stability of the car. You want negative camber in the back, you want toe in on the back, unless you're really trying to do something unique like maybe a drift car or something. So really, I'm always thinking of where's the center of gravity and where is the center of pressure aerodynamically and where is the center of mechanical balance. And those two were constantly just moving them fore and aft. For me, the ideal car is the one that has some low speed oversteer, very agile. So, because most cars tend to understeer when you go slow and, and through a tight turn. So if you can make the car mechanically on the edge of oversteer so that it turns really well, but at the same time, make it stable at high speed so that when you get into a high speed corner, you're not struggling with all the oversteer that would come from a normal setup. It would have been good at low speed. So what I'm saying is low speed oversteer slightly, high speed understeer, that's the car that's gonna give the best lap time.